Welcome to part 40 of Basic Training. Today we're going to cover everything you need to know to play Hyrule Circuit on 150cc. Sticking with DK, the recommended build for this track is going to be our usual try-hard build with Bitty Buggy, Azure Rollers, and Paper Glider. Surprisingly, one of the more annoying strats we need to learn shows up at the very start of the run. Hold left on the joystick so that you can start moving left as soon as the run begins. Then after getting the rocket boost, start a left drift, build up a mini turbo, and do a right hop into another left drift to grab both the rupees. I've found that if you tighten up your drift angle for just a fraction of a second just after passing the bend, it should help you get those two rupees a bit more easily. In either case, widen your drift angle and use your mushroom just before getting to the grass. As long as you aim for this ramp here, you should have more than enough time to build up a mini turbo so that you can mini turbo trick off the ramp to get back to the track. After landing in a right drift, make sure to grab the next three rupees and try to stay as close to the wall as possible and build up an ultra mini turbo. Normally I rag on wiggle drifting, but it's permissible here. The next step is to build up a mini turbo and just hold the drift off the left hand side of the glider ramp. Your mini turbo will get released automatically, at which point, if you think of your joystick like a clock face, you can put it into a 4 or 5 position to do some glider vectoring and get back onto the track. One thing to point out is that in my run, I accidentally did a right hop before the left drift. But as long as you start the left drift early enough, you have more than enough time to build up the mini turbo, and that right hop is not only unnecessary, but it's actually slower than just directly starting the drift. Now just before getting to the top of the stairs, start a left drift and grab one of the rupees and then widen your drift angle until just before the anti-grab boost pad. Once you reach it, tighten your drift angle and build up an ultra mini turbo. Quick side note here, there are three of these little crystal structures in the narrow hallway and if you hit all three of them, an orange boost ramp pops up and you can use this to go over the fountain. Unfortunately when time trialing, you have to go far enough out of your way to hit these crystals that it's actually slower than going around the turn like normal. But I mention it because I use these crystals as a visual cue for when to release the Ultra Mini Turbo. Specifically, I wait until just around when the second crystal gets off screen before I release it. It's important because this game has a very tenuous relationship with stairs and the basic principles of physics, and if you release your Ultra Mini Turbo at a bad time, you'll get flung way off to the side. Now after releasing that Ultra Mini Turbo, do a left hop into a right drift so that you can grab a rupee and build up another Mini Turbo before the ramp. Release that mini turbo as soon as you get it, and then after tricking off the ramp, move to the right hand side of the track to grab the next two rupees. And now comes the NISC, or no item shortcut. It's actually a lot easier than it looks. Here's a step by step breakdown. When you get to the wooden bridge, you'll see a ramp right in front of you. Make sure to be moving towards the second arrow from the right, which has a rupee on top of it. Just before getting to the ramp, do a right hop and then do a left trick off the ramp. Land in a right drift and immediately widen your drift angle. Now, and this is the most important part of the whole setup, before getting to the grass, put your joystick in a neutral position and then jump. The tricky thing about this is that you need to jump right around here, which is way earlier than your brain is telling you to jump. But basically as long as you do a neutral jump before you get to the grass, you'll fly over most of the off-road. Now you won't fully clear the off-road, but if you jump as soon as you land on the grass, you should be able to make it back onto the track without losing any speed. This is one of the first shroomless cuts that I ever learned how to do, and honestly, it's easy enough that I would say for the purposes of time trialing, just figure it out, because it's simple enough and saves so much time that there's really no reason not to. Now on lap 3, there's going to be a piranha plant slash Deku Baba on the right hand side of the track after the shortcut, so make sure to try and move to the left as much as you can when doing the cut to avoid it. Now the last thing that we need to do is to soft drift around this last right turn to build up an ultra mini turbo. If you aren't good at soft drifting, just build up a super mini turbo instead. But in either case, trick off the ramp to finish up the lap. Laps 2 and 3 pretty much play the same as lap 1, so let's talk about the world record a bit because it actually does play somewhat differently from the strats that you watched in my run. The first thing you'll notice is that they trick off the ramp after using the mushroom at the start of the run. Now it's not super hard to get this trick, but the problem is that it's hard to get it in such a way that it saves time. Now the reason that we only do this on lap 1 and not laps 2 and 3 is that it actually forces you to take a slightly wider line. Now this doesn't matter on lap 1 because we have to take a wide line anyways to grab the 3 rupees, but because we don't need to do that on laps 2 and 3, we want to avoid this trick so we can take a tighter line around the turn. After that, the world record does motion glider instead of regular old glider vectoring like we did, and they also try to land at the top of the stairs, which is faster than landing at the bottom of the stairs and then moving up, but the vectoring needs to be done in kind of a specific way to avoid losing time. Then in the fountain section, they do a slightly different setup for the shroomless cut, where they land from the trick ramp and then do a left hop into a right drift to build up a mini turbo first. The timing and positioning for this is pretty precise, 
and the time save is fairly minimal, which is why I don't go for it in my own run. However, one cool thing is that on laps 2 and 3, they do this seemingly random left drift after landing from the trick ramp. They don't build up a mini turbo or anything, and instead just move straight into a right drift before doing a mini turbo trick off the ramp. This weird left drift is an example of something called a Kassan slide or a slide jump, and I've got an entire video explaining what this technique is and why it saves time. So check that out after you're done with this video because I don't have enough time to go over it here. Now the final difference between my run and the world record is that they do one more slide jump at the end of the run. And that's it for strats. Let's talk a bit more about the track while checking out my current personal best. And by the way, as always, if you found this video helpful so far, I'd really appreciate if you could drop a like and a comment to let me know since this is by far the best way to help the video get spread to other people and that in turn helps out the channel. Thank you very much. Now, Hyrule Circuit. I really love this track. First of all, I am just amazed with what they did with the music here, and if you're a fan of Zelda games at all, it's impossible not to get super hyped when you hear it for the first time. Before playing this game, I didn't realize that a rock rendition of the main Zelda theme was something I needed in my life, but hey, here we are. Speaking of being a Zelda fan, I really like how many Easter eggs there are to be found here. Some of these are more in your face, like the Zelda-esque bats, the Deku Babas, and Hyrule Castle and the Master Sword. But one of my favorite things about the track, just in terms of Zelda theming, is the hidden path that opens up when you hit all those crystals. When I first got this game, I messed around with the time trial here for a bit, and then I watched the staff ghost to see how they played the track. I literally laughed out loud when I saw them pick the hidden path, just because of how cool of an homage it was to the Zelda franchise. I guess my point is that just in terms of aesthetics and track design, you could tell that a lot of care went into making this a course that Zelda fans could really appreciate. In addition to all that, the Shroomless Cut is one of my favorites in the entire game. It's not necessarily the most impactful or anything, but it is pretty big. Not only that, but it's not really hard to learn, and it just looks really cool too. One important thing to point out about this shortcut when playing online though, is that if you do take it, you'll have to forego getting any items, so you don't really want to do that unless you're already good on that front. Now all that being said, I do have some gripes about the course. First of all, while the track looks amazing, Outside of the Shroomless Cut, there's not a whole lot to do on the track. The other thing I dislike about the track is that it's totally obvious that it was not designed with a 200cc difficulty in mind, particularly with the last set of turns which are just awful to navigate unless you specifically practice them over and over again. These are all minor complaints though to be honest, and despite its flaws, this is one of my favorite tracks in the entire game. And that's everything you need to know to play Hyrule Circuit on 150cc. I really enjoy this track, and I had a particularly fun time trying to learn how to do the shortcut, so I hope that the setup that I provided helps you all out as well. Thank you all very much for taking the time out of your day to do some basic training, and as always, I will see you in the next video.